Batman Beyond Rebirth is actually the sixth volume in the comic series that has been running since 1999, and it should not be confused with the animated series of the same name. Nevertheless, Volume 6 has a total of 50 issues till date, and its publication began in 2016 and is still running. The overall volume is titled Divide, Conquer, and Kill, and was written by Dan Jurgens and penciled by Bernard Chang. The volume even manages to end with an exciting cliffhanger. Certainly, this sets the stage for new plot lines and generates anticipation for the next installment. So far, Volume 6 can boast of 11 acts, that is 11 parts of the story arc, and in this video, we simply follow the story where it leads us, so let's get on with it. The first act is subtitled Escaping the Grave. Here, Terry McGinnis joins forces with Commissioner Barbara Gordon to defeat the Joker's gang. His friend Matt and recovered ally Max join the party too. And yep, in this one, the Commissioner of Police is the female incarnation of the infamous bespectacled Gordon, and it seems there's no end to the likeness of his image. But back to the story, Terry's ex-girlfriend Dana is kidnapped by the Jokers while moonlighting as a social worker. Determined to save her, Terry investigates further and encounters a random Joker fueled by Bane's drug. Terry struggles during the fight and blames it on his recent loss of fitness. To rescue Dana, Terry devises a plan to disguise himself as a Joker named Train Malone. Meanwhile, Dana is taken to the Joker's leader, Terminal, who aims to resurrect the original Joker. Recognizing Terry, Dana reveals Terminal's plan to him, but they are caught and captured. Terry ultimately escapes, saving Dana, but then he reveals his secret identity. On his part, Terminal also escapes with a comatose Bruce Wayne, whom he plans to use for future crimes. Terry now realizes Bruce is alive and also stops Terminal from stealing a powerful device called the Keystone. This device is the ultimate hacker's tool. After a confrontation, the real and all but undercover Joker emerges, killing Terminal and escaping. The next act is called Rise of the Demon. At this point, Bruce seems better and is concerned about Terry's new suit. A character named Curare is being pursued by the League of Assassins and seeks Batman's help. Terry, having at first prioritized his personal life, is convinced by Bruce to assist. They discover Ra's al Ghul has returned, as well as the truth about Terry's suit, which is prone to malfunction. It almost killed Bruce the last time around. It turns out Ra's is in fact Damian Wayne, a son of Bruce Wayne. You might know him as Robin, but in this instance, he is a bad guy. Damian blames his choices in life on being sidelined by his father, who chose Terry as the new Batman. So, Damian abandoned Gotham and infiltrated the League. He rose up the ranks, and so there you have it, he became the new Ra's al Ghul. While Terry battles Damien, Bruce is overpowered by Koru, Ubu's son. At some point during the fight, Damien reveals his real motivations. Damien joined Ra's to confront global threats while his father, Bruce, was obsessed with saving just Gotham. Damien subsequently launches missiles to purify the Earth. Terry overcomes the suit's glitch, and with Bruce's help, stops the missiles. Damien reconsiders his plan and chooses to lead the League for good. Bruce and Terry return home, leaving Damien behind. Batwoman Beyond is the third act and involves Commissioner Barbara Gordon getting abducted while she was investigating Crown Point. It's a crime-infested area of Gotham City protected by Batgirl, a teenage vigilante named Nyssa. Max goes over to Crown Point to check things out after receiving an alert. He finds Nyssa there and tries to make her an ally. At first, she refuses over the issue of trust, but they meet halfway and are able to rescue Commissioner Gordon. It turns out she was kidnapped by some corrupt cops. All three promise to work together from henceforth, and so Batgirl joins the group and is now a part of the expanding Bat family. In the fourth act, called Gotham Games, Commissioner Gordon assigns Batman the task of deactivating three Gotham aerial defense systems that have been dangerously set to target any flying vehicles. Eager to watch his friends Matt and Max compete in the futuristic basketball tournament known as the Gotham Games, Terry races to complete his mission swiftly. His first target takes him to the Gotham Transit Authority, where he encounters Shriek, a former supervillain who now sees himself as the protector of those residing in the tunnels. Emerging from a manhole in Chinatown, Batman faces a new vigilante named Bo Han, aka Hacker, who gained the power to hack into nearly any technology during the Brother Eye invasion. Forced to retreat from Chinatown due to hackers' aggression, Batman stumbles upon another compromised aerial defense system. Freon of the terrific trio is the mastermind behind the attacks, and Batman learns that she was resurrected by the now-deceased Dr. Hodges. 
Fueled by her grief and a belief that Gotham and Batman caused her colleague's demise, Freon has orchestrated a plan to make the city destroy itself using the rigged defense systems. With assistance from Shriek and Hacker, Batman works to contain Freon and thwart her destructive scheme. The fifth act is The Long Payback, as Bruce is now wheelchair-bound and quite a grumpy old man. Terry and Matt are allowed to stay in the manor to care for him. Barbara informs Bruce about a new vigilante in Gotham and expresses concern about Terry's continuation as Batman. Bruce sends Terry a new bat suit when the Royal Flush Gang disrupts a museum event. Terry defeats Ace and captures King and Jack, all from this same gang. But their client, who happens to be called Payback, sends Stalker to capture Batman. Stalker kidnaps Dana, leading to a fiery confrontation. Payback then intervenes, seeking to kill Batman himself. Ten of the Royal Flush Gang aids Batman, but Payback captures her too. Batman and Stalker are thrown from a building, but are saved by Ten's glider. Bruce's son Matt assumes the new Robin and assists Terry. They defeat Payback and return to the Batcave, where tensions arise between Terry, Dana, and Bruce over Matt's involvement. In the end, Terry supplies Stalker's village with necessary resources before addressing the situation with Matt. In Target, Batman, which is the sixth act, Terry reluctantly accepts Matt as the new Robin under Bruce's guidance. Melanie visits Terry and offers a fresh start to their relationship, but Dana witnesses them kissing and leaves in tears. They receive a distress call about Scab causing trouble at the police headquarters. Terry eventually defeats Scab, but is dissatisfied with Matt's performance, forbidding him from being Robin. Ultimately, he would have to prove himself by coming to Terry's aid when they confront Scarecrow, complete with his usual fear tactics. Scarecrow even turns it up a notch higher and amplifies Gotham's fear further while turning Robin and Bruce against Batman. At this point, Melanie has to save her crush and so helps Batman fight Robin. Then Terry now reveals his identity to her. Talk about a reward for being a good girlfriend. But still, tensions arise among the team after all that trouble. The seventh act, called The Final Joke, begins with Neo-Gotham celebrating Thomas Wayne's 100th birthday, but the ceremony is disrupted by a train explosion orchestrated by the Joker. Batman and Robin save their friends just as Commissioner Gordon encounters the Joker in her office. Surprise, surprise! The Joker has since formed a new gang called the Throwbacks, and they have their crosshairs on attacking the city. Batman and Robin confront the throwbacks, but Robin is kidnapped by Joker Beyond, who is really a cyborg controlled by the Joker himself. Dick helps Batman defeat Joker Beyond, but the Joker captures Robin and demands Bruce's identity. Batman and Dick trace the Joker's broadcast and rescue Robin, but the Joker dies of a heart attack during their confrontation. Matt develops PTSD, and the group agrees he should no longer be Robin. Also, Harley Quinn steals the Joker's corpse. This act, which has the same title as the entire volume, Divide, Conquer, and Kill, is the eighth one. In it, Bruce's strange behavior leads Terry to discover a new villain named Split. Meanwhile, Bruce's identity is stolen by Falseface, and he frames Terry for murder. The team learns Falseface's plan to exploit their powers and to isolate his speed abilities. They enlist Barry Allen's help, but face a deadly explosion caused by Falseface. Terry subsequently loses his memory and becomes a homeless suspect, while a strange woman steals his bat suit to protect Neo Gotham. The ninth act, called First Flight, has Terry on the run in the company of Constance. Also, the new Batwoman emerges as Bruce and Matt suspect Melanie or Barbara have something to do with it, but both deny involvement. Blight battles Batwoman while seeking a new host. Just as Constance somehow realizes Terry doesn't remember himself as Batman, and so she plans to transfer Blight's mind into Terry's body out of spite. Blight's men attack Wayne Industries, but Batwoman and Dick intervene. Constance is about to wipe Terry's brain when Batwoman rescues him. Blight finally kills Constance for disappointing him and attacks the Batcave. Terry and Batwoman team up to defeat Blight, who is ultimately contained in the ocean. In The Eradication Agenda, which is the penultimate act, Bruce sets up a hidden Batcave called the Bat Suite in a Wayne Industries building. On his part, Terry fights Slamjackers and rescues Damien from Mr. Zero's, who has plans to freeze over the entire Earth. Elena becomes Batwoman with Dick's support. The team retrieves suits from the Batcave and confronts the League of Assassins. They access a bunker and launch into space, defeating Mr. Zero and disabling the satellites. The world's climate returns to normal and Terry convinces Damien to reform the League. In Cancelled by Yesterday, or the 11th Act, Terry is compelled to go back in time to help Bruce, who has had a post-hypnotic suggestion implanted in him. But in reality, it's a setup by Bruce to ensure that Terry doesn't lose his father, and Bruce had earlier pretended to be crazy so Terry could do this. The bottom line is the plan worked. 
and there's more in the form of a curtain call act, where Bruce and Matt are attacked by a character named NQ. She is in the process of disintegrating molecularly and needs some tech from the Wayne Industry Lab to prevent this. Wonder Woman even makes an appearance in this one, and together with Terry, they help NQ out. Bruce eventually recovers, thank goodness, and it seems he or his legacy can never die. Remember to subscribe to our channel if you found this content valuable. We'll see you in the next one.